Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. Starting off this week with some manufacturing news, and the world of 3D printed footwear has been seeing more developments lately. At the recent circus that is New York Fashion Week, footwear giant Puma revived their classic Mostro shoe, now in a new 3D printed form. The weird and wonderful design definitely takes advantage of the technology's capabilities in terms of interesting shapes, and though these are obviously not to everyone's tastes, it is a sign of a small trend beginning to take hold. Another brand taking a different approach is Vivo Barefoot. They recently announced a partnership with material science company Belena, where they will begin testing a new circular manufacturing system for their barefoot shoes. Using Belena's BioSurflex 3D bio-based and biodegradable 3D printing material, the shoe company is aiming to create made-to-measure shoes that are recyclable and compostable. Vivo says trials are underway now, and they hope to bring this new technology to customers next year. 3D Natives also wrote an overview of the rest of the players in today's 3D printed footwear market. It's still quite gimmicky at the moment, but there are aspects to this that I find interesting. First is how this method allows for highly customizable shoes that can fit your feet perfectly. A lot of them require the customer to simply scan their feet using a phone and that's it. Another feature only available to this type of manufacturing is a new level of complex geometries, especially for shoe soles. Designers can even tailor them to give certain bounce or stiffness in specific locations, meaning it could improve performance in running and other sports. A team of researchers at MIT recently developed a model specifically for optimizing running performance for 3D printed midsoles. It takes the attributes of the person, like their height, weight and other general dimensions, then simulates a person's running gait, or how they would run in a particular shoe. The ultimate goal, they say, is for a person to be able to film themselves running, then using the model they'll automatically know what the absolute best performing shoe is for their body type and specific biomechanics. And in other manufacturing research, a team at King's College London has made a discovery which potentially could have a big impact on plastics recycling. They conducted a study on how to best break down PLA-based plastics, which are commonly used for products like single-use cups, cutlery, and 3D printing filament, and they found that an enzyme in laundry detergent significantly speeds up this process. The scientists created a new super-concentrated enzyme, which can break down the plastics into their building blocks in around 24 hours, which is 84 times faster than the standard 12 weeks that industrial composting facilities take. These building blocks can then be used to create new plastics at the same quality previously, for multiple reusability. It'd be cool to eventually have an infinite recycler for 3D printing, to reuse filament forever. Slant3D uploaded a great video explaining how he designs and prints enclosures for close to mass production level print quality and almost no post-processing. He found that printing the object at a 45 degree angle and adding a thin custom fin as a support on the back improves quality. He also added a texture to the surface of the print, which lined up with where the fin connects, so once removed you don't even see where it was. What an awesome tip. Switching over to robotics news, and KimLab showed off Ringbot, a curious monocycle robot with legs. This thing not only drives and balances, but has two legs to stabilize itself when stationary and turn itself around. I've no idea what the potential applications are for this, but it certainly is a cool design. Another interesting robot design I've not seen before is the Ascento. It's a security robot that patrols, climbs stairs, detects faces and vehicles, has thermal imaging, and can do things like alert when they come across doors that aren't supposed to be open. The company behind it recently released a video of the robot ascending a ski slope in Switzerland. It seems there truly will be no escape from these things. Boston Dynamics also uploaded a quick clip of their Atlas bot training for a work environment. There's no word yet on any real-world trials for this, like some of the other humanoid robots I mentioned last month. The team at Unitary Robotics uploaded a new video of their B2 quadruped robot showing off some new climbing and jumping capabilities. This is part of a clear trend we've been seeing over the past year, with many robot dog manufacturers making strides in movement. It seems the quaint old days of tippy-toeing and stuttering robots is almost over. And ending this week with some augmented reality news, and there seems to be a rush to get new AR devices out to ride the recent Apple wave. Vitra unveiled their Vitra One Lite augmented reality glasses, touting support for Apple's spatial videos. Very similar to the X-Real glasses you've seen before, these have a pretty narrow 43-degree field of view and cost around $350. Brilliant Labs announced their new frame glasses this week too. With a design John Lennon would love, these glasses are by the makers of that strange monocle we saw last year. There's not much in terms of concrete specs, but there seems to be a simple display, perhaps with a waveguide on the lens. They're marketing it as an AI companion that connects with a phone app, allowing you to talk through the glasses and receive text answers directly in the lens. Lots of CGI renders currently, so we'll wait for real-world reviews. 
And finally, if you're curious about how all these crazy glasses and headsets are designed, iFixit have been continuing their good work, this time by releasing two teardown videos of the Apple Vision Pro. It's an extremely complex design, with some particularly interesting sections on the front-facing display, as well as the new micro OLEDs used. Check it out. Alright, that's everything for this update. As always, source links are in the description. Subscribe to the channel for more cutting-edge news, or check out the MOSFET playlist. See you next time.